boys and girls, today we're going to talk about Vincent Van Gogh. Vincent Van Gogh was a very, very famous painter. He used very thick brush strokes that you could see, which made his pictures look like as if they were coming alive. He was very famous for using very thick applications of paint. That means he used a lot of paint on his pictures and he liked you to see each brush stroke that he made. So a lot of his pictures don't look very smooth. They look as if they have a very thick and maybe rough texture to them. Now let's watch as Vincent Van Gogh's Starry Night comes alive before our very eyes. Now that we've seen how Vincent Van Gogh adds movement to his paintings, we're going to start our next project. We're going to create a Starry Night print. Our learning goal for this project is we are doing printmaking, which means we're producing a work of art through printmaking that utilizes simple printing techniques. We're going to be using just things you can find around your home to create our prints. Our learning targets are I can use movement in my art and we're going to do that in ways that we add some different applications of materials to our picture. I can use space in my art, meaning we're going to use the entire space of our page. We're not going to leave any space undone and I can create prints. I will be showing you a couple different ways to create your Starry Night print. So a lot of these materials you may not need. You will need something to put everything on, like a piece of paper, a brown paper bag, or anything that you can use to draw on. I recommend a pencil in case you make a mistake. You'll have an eraser to erase it. I have salt on here, and that's optional. I'm going to show you a very, really neat technique to add texture using regular markers that you have at home, water and salt. I have markers on here. I have crayons as optional, paint as optional, pastels as optional, and colored pencils as options to add color to your picture. I will be doing a step-by-step -step shortly on the video of how to create your Starry Night background. I also am going to have these available to, for you to print or view these directions. All right, let's get started. All right, boys and girls, now we're ready to get started on our drawing of Vincent Van Gogh's famous Starry Night. So I, right here, I've brought a picture of Van Gogh's Starry Night, and I want you to take a look, and you're gonna see how there is this, what we call a burning bush that starts right here. And this burning bush is going to be in the foreground in the front of our picture, and then we're going to add some other lines and we're going to add some wiggly lines and we're going to add some swirly lines and we're going to create the sense of movement and these different stars and a moon and then we're going to just go ahead and we're not going to add the whole city we're just going to add some rolling hills and use some texture to fill in all right so now that we've taken a look and we just looked at it on the video earlier and then now we've just saw the starry night here just to refresh our memory and we're going to be now drawing a simplified version of this and then adding some different techniques to create some textures. All right, so right now I want you to get a piece of paper and I want you to set it up from side to side, which is horizontal, and that is also hot dog style. So set your paper hot dog style, and we're gonna get started. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna start by adding our burning bush. So our first step is we're going to be drawing some jagged lines or some that look a little like zigzag lines and we're just going to go ahead and you're going to add a zigzag from the top not quite all the way to the top of the paper but we're going to start from the bottom and go all the way up almost to the top so that is part of our step one our step two is we're going to start at the top and we're going to come back down and we're going to add another zigzag line like this one to make it come down towards the bottom so our step two again we start here 
and then you're going to draw your simplified burning bush. Our step number three is we're going to add one long line from one side to the other side of our paper and it's going to be not quite straight but it's going to have a little curve to it and we're going to start from here and we're going to go all the way to the end of the paper. I don't want you to walk, go, make your line go through your burning bush so what you're going to do is you're going to start here and you're going to stop when you get to the bush and then with your finger you're going to imagine that you are drawing a line through it. We don't want to actually draw the line through it so take your finger and you're going to go straight across or almost straight across and we're going to start where we would think it would come out and then you're just going to add a little curve to the end of it for step number four we're just going to add another part of a rolling hill so we're going to start here so i want you to put a little dot here and i want you to put a little dot over here which is a little above that other line that we just made and what you're going to do is you're going to connect the two so we're going to add a line to connect the two and now we have two other parts of our rolling hill. All right, so for step number five, I want you to add a moon, and we're gonna add a moon over in this corner because if we were to lay and look up at the sky, we would see the stars and the moon if it were dark and it were a nice clear night. So we're gonna add a moon. If you wanna make a full moon, you can make a full moon. If you wanna do a crescent moon, I'm gonna show you how to do a crescent moon. It looks a little bit like a C. Or if you wanna do a half moon, you could do a half moon. So you can choose how you want to do it. <clears throat> I'm going to do a crescent moon. So I start and it's like I'm making a C and then I take this line and I go back in the same direction to connect to the other side. So it's like a big C and a smaller C. Okay, for step number six, we're going to add another little element inside of our burning bush. So it's going to be like the same shape that we did on the outside. We're just going to add another smaller one on the inside. So we have two parts of our burning bush. All right, for step number seven, we're going to just add a little bit of extra texture to the bottom part of our ground. And we're just gonna add some small little dashed lines. So these are dashed lines. And we're gonna add just a couple dash, few dashed lines all around just to add a little bit of texture because we're gonna add other elements to add more texture, but let's just add a little bit of visual texture. For step number eight, we're going to use these same dashed lines and we're gonna go around our moon. So I want you to go in a circular motion with your dashed lines around your moon. So it's like it's glowing. We wanna make sure that we're showing emphasis. We're really going to highlight the fact that we have a moon there. All right, for step number nine, we're gonna add one swirly line. And you can add your swirly line anywhere in the sky of your starry night. If you start here, remember, we don't wanna draw anything through our burning bush, so we wanna stop when we get to the burning bush. So I'm gonna start here and I'm gonna stop with my other finger. I'm gonna pretend like I'm going across it. So here's where it would come out on the other side. And I'm gonna go down and I'm gonna add one curved line like that. So we're gonna add one swirly line. We're gonna also, like I said, we're gonna add other elements to show texture, but we wanna get just a couple little visual textures in here as well. So that is the end of the drawing portion of our Starry Night. And now I'm gonna show you a few other techniques to add color and add other elements into your Starry Night. All right, so what I want you to do now is, if you have crayons, I want you to find a crayon, let's find maybe a brown, a lighter brown, a darker brown. So I want you to find a light, a dark brown, if you have crayons, and I want you to find a green. And if you wanna use another lighter green, you could use another lighter green. And I want you to also find, let's see, a yellow as well. So if you have crayons, I want you to pause the video and I want you to go grab your crayons. And right now, I'm gonna quickly show you what parts I want you to color with the crayons. We're not coloring the whole thing, I just want you to color a couple parts of it. All right, so now I'm gonna show you quickly what parts I want you to color with which color crayons. All right, now that we've stopped and we've colored the outer part of our burning bush, the inner part of our burning bush, we've colored it our moon, and we've colored just this part of the grass for our rolling hills. We wanna leave the rest of it blank 
Make sure you fill in your white spots when you're coloring in with crayon. Always fill in your white spots. That's using great craftsmanship, which is what we're always practicing. All right, so there's one more thing that I wanna add to our picture. I wanna add a couple circles. So I want you to add, let's say, let's add five circles. So we have one, there's two, three, four, five. So now we've added five circles. I want you to fill in those five circles with your yellow crayon, if you have one, fill it in. All right. Okay, so now we're ready to add some textural elements to our Starry Night. All right, so what I want you to do is I want you to find some things around your house. And we're gonna, right now, we're gonna work on the grass part of our Starry Night. So you could actually go find some grass outside or leaves outside. I found this, it's called a doily and it has some nice texture to it. And then I also found this nice little piece of a Lego. So all of these things have a great texture and remember texture is the way that something feels, whether it's rough or bumpy or smooth like the grass or soft, anything that has a texture. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your pieces of texture and you're gonna slide them under your paper. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna slide it underneath and you're gonna use a crayon. So any <clears throat> crayon, and I want you to color over top. So remember, our piece is underneath. So our texture piece is underneath. And I'm gonna use all the texture pieces that I showed you. But what I want you to do is start filling in this area of your rolling hills with some different texture. All right, so now we've added texture into the grassy area of our Starry Night picture. Now we wanna add some more up top. So now I'm gonna go back, I'm gonna get these, some scrap pieces of paper. And if you would like to, you could use those texture elements that you used before, like the piece of Lego that I found, or the grass or leaves. Or if you would like to, you could cut some swirls with some scrap paper to use for this next part. And I'm gonna use both. I'll use the texture elements that I used for the grass and then I'm also going to use some of these to see if they pop out underneath my paper. Okay, so now I have my blue marker, and what I'm going to do is I am going to add some swirls into the other extra parts of my sky, and I'm going to draw them with a marker. Now I've got my swirls. I'm ready to dip my paintbrush. And if you don't have a paintbrush, but you have all the other materials, like you have a marker and you have a cup of water and you have your salt, but you don't have a paintbrush, you don't have to use a paintbrush. You could use your finger and dip your finger in with the water. But what you, I want you to do is I want you to take, if you, have a, if you have a paintbrush, dip your paintbrush in water, just some clean water, and you're gonna trace along your marker lines. So what I want you to do is trace along your marker lines and you're gonna lose some of the marker line because it is going to start blending together and we want it to blend together. So we're gonna add, we're just gonna trace around our swirls. Okay, now my paper is nice and wet. So what you're gonna do is while it's nice and wet, you're going to take your salt and you're gonna sprinkle some salt all along your paper. And then you're gonna check back in about five minutes and we're gonna see what happens once this 
starts to form, we're gonna see what happens when the salt mixes in with the water and the marker. So I will see you in five minutes. All right, so now we've given it a little bit of time and now we can see that our markers started to blend together a little bit more the longer that we let it sit. You'll see there's some different sections where the salt really popped our colors and spread them out, which gives us a nice texture to it. And the longer that it takes to dry completely through, the more that you're gonna see the separation that the salt gives on your paper. And you're gonna see the different textures. So if you look right here, I really like how these two colors started to blend together and also over here, you can see how they started to blend together. And the salt, like I said, is really going to make it pop. All right, so that concludes your starry night. I hope you had fun. Great job.